Today's video is going to be a good one. We're going to take Pimp My Cluster and The Price is Right, mash those two together, and that's what we have today. So to start off with, we have just a boring four gauge Silverado cluster. This would be like your work truck model. And we are going to go full custom on it. We've got a replacement lens with the chrome bezels. You see the original Chevy doesn't have the chrome insert bezels. We're going to put that on. We've got the silver face with the six gauge cluster. And we're going to be installing the two extra motors and a few extra components that have to go along with it. And we also have, well, this, this face has the blue tint to the back of it. When you hold it up to the light, you get the blue filter through it. So, dog, we heard you like blue, so we're going to have a blue face with blue needles and blue LEDs. Now, with the price is right, you win prizes. So, how is this going to work? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this cluster up just like I described, put it on eBay, put it as an auction at a low price and just see what happens. And you guys will have to guess how much it's gonna sell for. The closest guesses will win a multimeter. Uh, I don't have just one to give away. I've got four. Four of you are gonna win a multimeter and all you have to do is guess down in the comments what you think this cluster is gonna sell for. So let's get started. So we are starting with a 2011, so we've got a new body style, uh, Silverado 1500, and it's 100% stock right now, so it has the kind of a teal aqua color backlighting to it, and the red needles, and we're going to be changing both. I have done this one other time with the uh, four gauge cluster. And I did not have to do any programming, which I was surprised because usually with GM they lock out the uh, unused, oops, the unused gauges in the EEPROM. But uh, I had success with just putting in the motors and it worked. There are going to be a few other uh, resistors we'll have to add in there and I'll cover that shortly. Okay, so we are going to populate the unpopulated. This is the volt, and this is for the oil pressure. Um, first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and open up these holes so the uh, stepper motor can get mounted. Here are the motors I'll be using. These are brand new doesn't even have solder on the leads. Now these stepper motors are not the same as the X25 and X27s like the 03 and 06 older generation. New body style has their own stepper motor style. Besides adding the stepper motor and the backlighting, there's going to be an one LED to light up the needle and then two LEDs for the backlighting. But there's also gonna be a total of four resistors that will need to be added. R28 right down here at the bottom. This needs to be a 750 ohm. R20 up here is a 1.5K. Uh, the 1.5K run the backlighting, the 750 ohm run the needle LED. Same on this side too. We have an R13 that needs to be a 750 ohm. And at R26, um, I'm sorry, no, it's R25 needs to be uh, the 1.5K. Here my 750 ohm resistor is a little bit too long, so I'm just going to scrape the pad just a little bit extra so it will reach. And here I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of a tug with a side iron to make sure it's 
Got a good hold. And it didn't budge, so we're good. My 1.5K has extended leads down the bottom of it, so it should have no trouble reaching the pads. I won't have to modify the solder mask for this one. And here again, I'm giving it a little bit of a tug with my soldering tip just to make sure it's anchored. So here is the board with all of the uh, LEDs swapped out. And like I covered in one of my older videos when doing this, I'm removing four leaded LEDs and I'm replacing them with just a standard two leaded, two leaded LED. So I need to be careful on mounting. So I'm gonna double check them to make sure I did it right. And to do that, we are gonna use today's prizes. Um, so this is the old meter, which I've already done a review on have a video on um, they sent me a new one they said they made a few changes and this is a, the new model let's take a look and compare the two I'm giving both of these away hmm well just just a little bit smaller version but they had mentioned that they changed the way the button layout is uh, so as you cycle through the functions um, you can go forward and backwards instead of having to cycle all the way back around. I guess it makes it slightly more convenient. Let's see if the leads have changed. Leads feel nice. Um, still just a standard uh, silver plated, although it does look a little bit better coating than some of the other inexpensive leads I've handled. Let's compare it to the old. 
Let's see here. Let's open this up. So there, I definitely shrunk them down. Um, yeah, this feels a little bit more like a PVC, maybe a little stiffer and harder. This new one is maybe a little bit more flexible, which I like. Um, but again, the tips, I like a fine tip. I like, I don't know, I'm usually working with surface mount, so I like a fine pointy tip. It looks like they just kind of shrunk everything down a little bit, made it more portable. Has the brass insert like the other one and it does not have uh, like a clip to, to uh, hold on to the screw so the screw will go flying when you put in batteries so keep an eye out for that Oh, it's on auto right now. I can hear a relay clicking in there as it's uh, going through its functions. Bet if I push and hold that, it'll turn the light on. Yes, it does. Pretty decent flashlight. I guess, you know, if you're in a pinch and you're working in the dark, it will get the job done. Let's compare the screen to the older model. Do I have batteries in here? I think I do. Yeah, there's a power button. Maybe I don't have batteries in here. Oh, I took the batteries out. Okay, so now I got batteries loaded up in both of them. Let me turn off some of my overhead lights here so we can get a good look at the screens. And I should be able to turn them both on at the same time. Okay. Now the new one does seem a titch brighter. And yeah, the screen is a little bit smaller because you know the whole overall meter is a little bit smaller. All right, let's use it. So both of them come with the hard carrying case and temperature probe. Yep. And I did notice that they changed the lead location on the old one there through the bottom here. If I remember right, yeah, these will light up to tell you uh, what port you should be using or which banana jack you should be using. And let me see if I can get this in diode mode. What I usually like to see is, does diode check mode uh, have a high enough voltage to light up an LED? It's always nice to just use diode check to check LEDs. Uh, let's find out. Hey, yeah, it is. Oh, of course, my hand's covering up so you can't see. But yeah, look at that. It uh, has plenty... Plenty of voltage I'll put on diode check mode to light up an LED. Let me just switch to the old one and see if it was the same. I honestly don't remember. It's just uh, it's just nice so you don't have to, you know, break out your power supply just to check a LED. Let me get these little safety caps off of here. I don't be needing these. These are for, you know, high voltage stuff. But in my opinion, if you're uh, either an engineer, you really have... No business buying a $50 meter, or if you're uh, measuring high voltages, you also really have no business purchasing a $50 meter. But, I suppose I should put this in diode mode. Um, but for someone like me who's just fixing low voltage DC, stuff like this is 
just fine. Okay, manually on diode. Does it light up? Yeah, it does. Okay, nice. And you see there's the, uh, see that LED there that tells you uh, which jacks you should be using. Kind of a cool feature. Looks like they don't have that on the new one, but it's really not that big of a deal. I should see what these LEDs up here do. I have not read the directions at all, uh, so I'm just kind of winging it. Um, which uh, is kind of good because I think a product shouldn't require you to read the directions to really get to know how to use it. And so far, it seems to be doing all right. Um, yeah, let me just go through and check my LEDs. Good. Well, why is that one not lighting up? Maybe there's too much of a load on the... Okay, so the LEDs that light up the needles must be loaded down in circuit somewhere, but I should be able to light up um, the backlighting LEDs. But here I'm getting a volt, a zero, yep, I'm getting a zero voltage drop on this LED right here because I'm an idiot and mounted it wrong um, because I'm using the two leaded LED and the four leaded pad. I use the wrong set of pads, so I have to move that LED over to make it work. That one's good, good, yeah. So the rest of it's fine. I just need to fix, fix my own mistake. Here I have it in the non-contact voltage detector, and when I get close to my uh, solder sucker, you see it's it's live. That's nice for uh, just quickly checking an outlet to see if the breaker's been turned off or not. That works nice. Let's take a look at the specs. Uh, just a quick overview. Up to 600 volts DC, 600 volts AC it looks like. Okay, pretty standard stuff. Um, there's your resistance range, um, AC, DC. Okay, up to 10 amps. Um, yeah, 10 amps to the cable, sure. Uh, microfarad range. This is sometimes meters have a trouble getting up, up in the higher range, but this one doesn't seem to have any issues. You got your microfarads, you also have your millifarads, up to 60 millifarads. So that is not bad at all. There's your frequency ranges. And what else we got? Uh, let's just, yeah, let's check the uh, continuity on this thing. Uh, okay, so here's the beeps, continuity, eh, it's delayed. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. The coating on the leads do seem slightly more conductive than the last time I checked one of these meters. But leads are easy to replace, so there's really no reason I'm worrying about that. Um, what should I check next? Oh, ohms. So let's check the resistors I added. Uh, what is this, the 1.5 here? Yep, 1.496, that is right, and it's reading good. And these are my 700, what, 750 ohms? Is that, yeah, 748, okay, so that's good. And the screen does look nice. It's bright, crisp. And I do want to thank Coeats for uh, sending me these meters, for making this video possible. They sent these to me for free so I can send them to you guys. And so far, they've been nice to work with. They're always quick with communication and uh, fast at shipping. Okay, I just got done moving the LED to the right spot. So now when I power it up, all LEDs should light. So yeah, we have the needle LEDs and the backlighting LEDs. Backlighting, needle, and they're all lit. Good. And I did notice playing with this. So what, one of the things they did with this model is they made it so you could move your display dial from one end to the other without having to uh, um, cycle all the way through so I can go from volts to amps. And I did notice they did keep the LEDs in the jacks. I always got a kind of a kick out of that to kind of warn you if you're using um, the wrong jacks. It lights up to show you what you should be using. So when I switch from amps to volts, see here I'm on, well it's in auto range right now. So there we're on amps, and it shows you to switch over to the amperage jack uh, banana plug. 
and then volts back over to volts. I don't know why it gets such a kick out of that. I just think it's a cool idea. Sometimes with your old traditional meters, you forget to move it from, from amps to voltage. Oh, and they also kind of, they kind of cleaned it up a little bit with the old model. They had some buttons on the side, like the old one, you had the flashlight button here, power button at the top, and then the uh, automatic power off button here. But here they just kind of pushed everything to the front. Um, seems to make a little bit better sense to me. Now I can go ahead and uh, install those two stepper motors. Okay, and now I should be able to get a power up sweep out of these two F motors. Okay, that's a good sign. Now I can just start assembling. If you miss out on the giveaway i will have an affiliate link for the new multimeters um, and they will be running a promotion soon and i'm going to try to have a coupon code going for you guys and i just checked the price on them and right now even not on sale they're only like 42 dollars um so with coupon code and promotion uh you guys might be able to get a killer deal Won't be needing this. All right. Time for the fancy pimped out needles. Now these are blue, so look good with the blue LEDs, but they also have that chrome a uh, little ring around it, which will look good with the uh, chrome rings inside of the lens bezel here. So definitely we'll dress it up a notch. Okay, I'm just going to check needle positions. Make sure my zero is on zero. Mm, yeah, that looks pretty good. There's the needle starting positions. Of course, gas needs to be just a hair below the E. All of the rest of them right at zero. Go ahead and peel this off. All right. There we have it. My camera is kind of struggling with the blue. It doesn't know what to do with the blue light. Um, yeah, it's going like ultraviolet uh, with my camera, but I can say in person, uh, it does look good. It's a very deep, rich blue. Yeah, my camera's definitely struggling because what I see in the camera is not what I see in real life. All right. Well, the two gauges I added are registering 
has no trouble communicating with the old Tech 2. Um, I will be programming the odometer um, for the vehicle it's going into. That's part of the eBay sale. I notice the display is flickering on my camera, but that's just a timing issue. Maybe it'll go away if I turn off the lights. And it does, in the camera, it shows some, some bright spots in the face. But uh, I think, again, that's just my camera having a hard time with the blue. Because with my actual eyeballs, the uh, the backlighting is very even. Yeah, it looks, uh, looks a lot better in real life than it does from what my camera's picking up. But you want your chance to win some multimeters. Um, same rules as kind of my last few giveaways. The uh, shipping is out of my own pocket, so I'm just sticking to the lower 48 states only. So I'll give you guys two days to make your guess on what you think this will sell for on eBay. Um, after two days, it'll be an unfair advantage, so I'm going to be ignoring anyone because then you can just watch the auction and take a guess then. And also no edits to the comment. Yeah, otherwise, you could just wait for the auction to end and then edit your comment to match the price it sold for. So I'm going to ignore any edits or anything past two days. Um, and also make sure to turn on your notifications um, to make sure uh, you see my reply in your comment. Um, it, sometimes notifications get sent to your spam folder. If you don't have it turned on, you might not know that you won. So take your guesses down below. And if you lose out on your chance on the meter, like I mentioned before, I'm going to have an affiliate link uh, with hopefully a coupon code working and or they are talking about having a promotion by the time this video goes live so we can check out the price once this is active. And I think that covers everything. Thanks for watching and uh, have fun.